Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be working on a pineapple twist handle. Thanks for watching. Here's what we're working on today, folks. So, I've already got my bar marked out for my handle. This happens to be about 7 inches in length. And I've made between two punch, center punch marks about 3 inches for where my pineapple twist is going to go. This is going to become the handle for a skillet that I am working on. It's one of my regular offered products on my website. So I just got an order in for it. So I figured I'd get to bring you guys along on how to take and actually make a pineapple twist. This pineapple twist is the way that I have learned to do them. I don't know if there's any other way of doing them. As far as I know, there's only one. But uh, maybe you guys can put some comments down in the section comment section below if you know of another way of doing it or a better way I'm always willing to learn so essentially what we're going to do is the first step in this process if I could draw straight we're going to take and chisel in a straight line okay we're going to do this on all four sides so we're going to do the same thing three inches and make a straight line a lot better than what I'm drawing. So don't take too much offense to the way I'm drawing, but we're gonna chisel in on all four sides equally the same length and whatnot. The next step in that process, after we get these lines chiseled, we are going to give it a twist. It doesn't matter which way, it could be to the left, it could be the right, whatever tickles your fancy. And then after we get that done, the process as it goes, once it's all twisted up, we re-square up the bar and then chisel once again all four lines and then untwist the bar one half turn. And that should stand us up are those little pineapple checks. So for the guys who already know how to do this, this will be redundancy and you'll probably want to skip to the end of the video to just see how mine came out. For the guys that are wanting to learn, there will be the rest of this video to watch. So yeah, let's go get this piece hot and we'll be over at the anvil and I'll start chiseling the lines. Okay everyone, here we are at the anvil. As you can see, this piece is cold. I've got it locked down with my hand hold down tool and I'm going to mark this out cold first. And that's what I want to do first and foremost before I do anything else is mark this out cold. This here is not technically a cold chisel. It's more like a really small sixteenth of an inch radius um, chisel. That way it doesn't damage my anvil if it comes off. And all I'm trying to do is give the impression of a groove. I'm not trying to cut the material. So all we want to do is create a line and we're going to continue this on all four sides. Cold first. And we're wanting this so this way we have a groove that when we come back and we want to deepen this we can at a later date. Back when it, once we get bring it up to heat. This eliminates the rush that you may have that most guys feel that there is, which it's a good notion. There's a, there's a quite a rush, a kind of a sense of urgency when you pull something out of the fire, um, you know, to get as much work done with it as possible, you know, while it's still hot. So, you know, definitely a sense of urgency when you pull it out of the fire. Well, this just helps alleviate some of that. You can very quickly find your center very quickly find your lines and all you gotta do is ride it in the groove and it goes pretty darn quick oh plus all this cold layout helps in the long run with productivity because this little bit of layout work saves you a lot of time and it helps everything look a lot more professionally done. It makes your stuff. If you should, if you're wondering why I'm using a pair of tongs, it's because I did start to heat this bar, 
But then I decide, no, nah, I better do it the cold layout method and show guys an easier way. So this end is still kind of hot. It's probably, oh, I don't know, a couple hundred degrees. It wasn't in there real long. It was just long enough to be an annoyance. So yeah. I just didn't want to cool it back down to show you guys where I've messed up. So, And there I just made it mark that wasn't supposed to be in the right spot so I get a chance to fixing that if that was hot and really hot you would not be able to fix that mark so I hope you guys are enjoying this video so far we're gonna get this all laid out on all four sides I'm doing this all in real time so you guys can kind of see um, you know what you can expect to do this and what kind of the amount of time it's going to take for you to accomplish this uh, mission. So you can see I've already come around most sides here. I could make my cold down a little tighter but it's okay. It'll get this portion done. I'll tighten it up before we do the hot work. And there we go. We should have four sides fairly equal. The quality of your pineapple twist all comes down to how straight you chase your lines. How straight you chase them and chisel them in and how the length of the line is the matching on all four sides. If they're a little out, your pattern will go a little off. And that's a problem. It just doesn't look as good. So take your time with this. It just takes what it takes, but it's worth the result. So anyways, I've got my four lines. Next part, I'll come out of the fire. Hopefully you guys can see that real well. Yep. Next point, I'll come out of the fire and I'll deepen all those lines. Okie doke, ladies and gents. I finished doing all that. Now, time for twisting. I'm going to stick one end in right up close to where I've got all my lines chiseled into the vise. I'll put my twisting wrench in down on top. And I'm going to give her a twist. I'm just coming back towards myself, so I have to remember that for the next one, I'll want it to go back away from myself. And I'm going to do one full 360 degree turn of this. The tighter, the tighter you twist this, the more of those little uh, cross hatch marks you're going to have in it that a pineapple has, the less you twist it, the more longitudinal those cross marks will be. I find 360 degrees is just fine. You don't have to go much more than that. And that's what that looks like right there. Consequently, that is a very interesting twist all on its own. It can be incorporated in all sorts of fire pokers and whatnots. So, next step in this process, give this a little straighten here. Got a little bent while it was going. Next step in this process, I'll go back to the anvil and I'll flatten out these two sides and we'll chisel it again. Okie doke, ladies and gents. I got this nice and hot again. I'm going to go ahead and heat it up. If this doesn't have to be super gangbusters hot, it just has to be hot enough. 
and we're just going to flatten out and square this back up to the original parent bar stock size. You don't want to thin this out, you just want to square it back up to the original thickness of the material. So keep that in mind. Once again, at this stage, this leaves a very interesting twist. So now that we've got it down to the original parent bar, nice and even like. Now we're going to chisel in our four lines again. Now this part here is always the part where I start getting nervous about pineapple twists. Because if you forgot something, well, you're about to find out about what you forgot when you get to the end of the deal here. So, set all that to the side. I've got my little handy dandy hold down tool. I'm going to find the top of that other groove. Then I'll aim directly down the center of the bar. And we're going to lay out cold or semi-cold, however you want to say it. And we're aiming to the bottom of this line here. So I just want to keep hammering that on through. Hoping and praying you haven't forgot about nothing. And we'll see. And you can see that starting to develop now. So, just go right on down through. And we'll mark all this out cold. I will make you guys watch this entire process. I'll come back after I've got all that marked out. It's essentially the same as before. And you just repeat this on all four sides. Then we will come out of the fire and we will twist this back and you'll see the pineapple twist. Okay, everyone. Here we are back at the vise. Hopefully the camera got focused in on this. Tighten up the vise really good here, and we're going to use our twisting wrench. Hopefully it's focusing in on the bar. I'm sorry if it's a little out of focus, but time is of the essence. So if you remember, we twisted back towards ourselves last time. This time we're going to twist away from ourselves. And I may have misspoken earlier when I said that you need to take and spin it around a full half rotation because as I remembered as I was working figuring this thing out in the fire you don't want to go full half rotation back you just want to turn this to where the edges stand up straight like a pineapple so then that just so happened to be a quarter turn oh Right back in here could use a little more of a twist, and I may do something with that. That way it gets a little more prominent. And I'll probably heat right in there. I didn't quite have my heat about where I wanted it. Hopefully you guys can see this bar. There we go. We got our focus in there. Um, it could use a little more heat back up in here to give it a twist. But essentially that's your pineapple twist. I'm a little delayed on time. I've got a wife waiting on me to go to the grocery store, so I uh, just kind of had to rush through this one a little bit. But I'll come back and give that a little, I'll give that a little more attention later, a little more attention to detail, get that fully twisted out. But that is essentially your pineapple twist in a nutshell. Oh, like I said, if you spend the right amount of time on it, it'll it'll come out looking a lot better than what I've got here. Um, like I said, I had to kind of rush through this one, uh, kind of a busy day, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. Um, you know, give it a big thumbs up or give it a big thumbs down. I greatly appreciate your feedback, and we'll catch you on the next one.